Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today I thought I would uh, make a short video talking about the uh, Mughal military, the early Mughal military that is, under uh, Babur, the founder of the dynasty. I mentioned uh, reading his memoir, the Babur Nama, uh, probably one of our most unique uh, sources, especially in the context of um, these uh, late medieval and uh, early modern Muslim rulers. And I thought I'd just share a little bit about the Mughal army and uh, if you wanted to maybe wargame it. So Babur uh, was a Timurid prince from the Fergana Valley, which is in Uzbekistan today. Uh, and he was part of this uh, situation, I guess, after the death of Tamerlane. Uh, the Timurid uh, Empire still existed, but there were all these Timurid princes running around, and there wasn't a lot of uh, central authority. Uh, so Babur, uh, to make a long story short, uh, eventually, he loses his emirate in the Fergana Valley. He moves to Afghanistan. Uh, as you can see on the map, uh, he holds for a brief time, uh, for some time, uh, Kabul and Kandahar. Uh, but eventually, uh, toward the end of his reign, he realizes that uh, the having an empire in Afghanistan just isn't working for a number of reasons. And... You can read the Babarnama where he explains some of it. Um, and he invades uh, India. Um, and the Mughals and Babur may be kind of unique compared to the Ottomans and uh, to the dynasty of Iran, the Safavids, are around the same time, that uh, he is not overly concerned with uh, a religious mission or uh, fighting some kind of um, holy war. So the Ottomans uh, have a pretty well-defined doctrine of uh, holy war. They call it Gaza. If you're a holy warrior, you're a Ghazi. Um, of course, that's not to say that uh, totally defines the Ottomans, of course, but that is part of their kind of uh, ideology. And the Safavids also definitely have a religious uh, mission in that uh, the founder of that dynasty, Shah Ismail, is kind of seen as a, a saintly figure and Shi'i Islam in some sense. Uh, and he leads, he led this kind of uh, mystical movement, uh, the Safavi movement uh, in Iran, and it was also uh, quite popular in Anatolia, uh, and that, that created tensions and, and conflict with the Ottomans, but that's a story for another time. But all this to say that the uh, case of Babur, uh, Babur in his memoirs is pretty clear that, uh, you know, he's doing this because he's a Timurid prince, uh, and which means that uh, his legitimacy comes from uh, the Mongols, partly. Uh, and in fact, uh, his mother, uh, as far as we can tell, was, uh, was Mongol, uh, had Mongol uh, lineage. Um, and uh, he goes into India with the idea of uh, kingdom taking. Uh, that's kind of what the word translates to, uh, which we would call today uh, imperialism. So, uh, you know, Babur is a Muslim, of course, but uh, the Mughal dynasty in its formation is not uh, an explicitly sort of religious uh, crusading project. Um, so that, that makes them a bit interesting and, and a little different, a little more different uh, than the other two uh, big Islamic dynasties uh, around the same time. 
but as you can see from the map, uh, he doesn't conquer all of India. He mostly conquers uh, the north of India. So Delhi, Agra, Lahore, Multan. And this part of India had been uh, under Muslim rule for some time since the Middle Ages. Uh, there was the Delhi Sultanate. Uh, so, and I should be clear uh, when I'm talking about Muslim rule, uh, these people are mostly Turks. Uh, so, and that's how it's kind of understood uh, in India. It's a Turkish invasion. Uh, and that had been the case for a long time. Uh, but, uh, and Babur, uh, his army is mainly Turks and some Afghans. Although later on, uh, the Afghans will be, uh, you know, are basically unreliable and are kind of pushed out of the army. Uh, but let's get to the uh, the actual military aspect. Uh, what what kind of army did Babur have? Uh, so in older books, uh, the Ottomans, Safavids, and Mughals are often referred to as uh, the gunpowder empires. Uh, I don't think that's entirely inaccurate. It's, it's sort of gone out of fashion, but. Uh, uh, you know, in the Mughal case, uh, gunpowder was important, but uh, traditional uh, horse archers were also quite important. Uh, so we can see here, this is an illustration from uh, later in the 16th century of the Babur-Nama, the, the original manuscript or an original manuscript uh, of it. And we have some images of uh, Mughal warriors. So... You can see here uh, a lot of the barding, uh, the, the very ornate barding, uh, but a lot of kind of Turkic horse archers. You can tell from the, let's see if we can enhance this a little bit, uh, you know, kind of a Turkish style helmet. Uh, definitely that's a, you know, step uh, quiver on the mountain on the waist that some of these warriors have. And of course, a curved sword for slashing on horseback. I really like the Mughal style of uh, miniature painting. Uh, uh, it's it's a lot livelier, I think, than uh, the the Ottoman or or even the uh, Persian uh, kind of school, if you will. But uh, a lot more lifelike. This one's pretty graphic, actually. We can see here this uh, maybe a Rajput or something getting slashed. Uh, so this is what the cavalry uh, probably looked like. I, if my Persian was uh, a bit better, I could try and read the uh, the, the uh, text here, but I'm not. I'm not sure uh, what that uh, says exactly. Anyway. The next picture, we have more cavalry, and we can see, and this is another scene from the Babur Nama, uh, we can see horse archers, and uh, also some troops with uh, swords and heavy armor, and the horses are also look like they have armored uh, barding but in these examples uh, you know not as many firearms as you would expect from you know the gunpowder empire designation uh, at least not in, in this picture uh, the next image will show uh, firearms so I'll have to jump over to the uh, web browser for that so let's go to that one uh, Sorry about that. I was just uh, fact-checking myself before the video started. Uh, this here is um, another 
illustration of a Babur Nama manuscript. And we can see they're laying siege. This is probably to a Rajput castle, uh, but I, I don't know for sure. Uh, but you can see the defenders have muskets, and uh, the, these are definitely Indian style uh, matchlock muskets from the shape. But we also see archers as well. And here, uh, a mix. And these are the three kind of wings uh, that Babur used quite effectively uh, to in his in his conquests of North India. We have the horse archers, but we also have the artillery and musketeers. So all three were used. And that was his combined arms uh, tactic, basically, to use archery, musketry, and cannons. And, of course, we also have some, uh, some cavalry with uh, lances as well. So uh, to learn, uh, let's go over our map here. So if you'd like to learn more about uh, the Mughal army, there's two books. Uh, both are published by uh, Rutledge. Uh, so they're a little expensive if you want to buy them. Uh, one is by Andrew de la Garza. Um, and the other, there's another by, uh, his name is, Joss J O S Gommins or J J S Gommins uh, is also a name. Uh, another uh, way his name is written in publications, uh, and also uh, I know uh, Gommins. Uh, if you want to, if you have like library access, you can look up his uh, articles in uh, in, in JSTOR or, or another database like that. Uh, he has quite a few on uh, Mughal military history. So, uh, I hope that gave you some idea of what the Mughal army uh, looked like in the early phases, uh, in the early decades of its uh, existence. But as you can see from this map, uh, you know, Babur uh, doesn't really rule over India uh, all that long. Uh, you know, most of his career as a warrior, it's spent in, um, you know, Afghanistan and Central Asia. And uh, the um, the um, Mughals, uh, in fact, uh, are always trying to get back to Central Asia. Uh, they never quite succeed, but it's it's something on their mind. Uh, there's also a book about that, uh, but the title and the author's name escapes me. But uh, it's something that uh, the Mughal emperors never fully give up uh, because they really relate to this uh, Timurid uh, Central Asian kind of heritage uh, and um, the and it's a strong influence because the language of the court and the language of uh, literature and administration in the Mughal Empire in India is um, Persian so uh, and in fact, uh, most of central before the rise of the Russian Empire in the you know 18th and 19th, especially 19th century, uh, most people uh, in Central Asia and much of um, Afghanistan and uh, India, of course, India is taken over by the British, so it's a little different uh, case. But uh, it's it's a whole Persianate world basically. Uh, people speak and write in uh, Persian. Uh, so I guess we'll take a look at the Essex range. So I uh, have, I was, I was looking for Mughals. I didn't know if I would find anything, but I, I, I've been on this 15 millimeter kick lately. So I thought I'd try 15 mil and uh, Essex has a whole range. Of course they spell it a little differently, but no big deal. Uh, Mughal means Mongol after all, uh, even though the, the dynasty themselves uh, considered and would call themselves uh, like Timuri because they were descended from Tamerlane. 
So we'll just look at a few of these and then I'll wrap up the video. Got uh, cavalry, uh, heavy cavalry. And really a lot of these are quite similar to uh, you know other types of Turkish cavalry. Uh, uh, these look quite good. Uh, they look just like the uh, the paintings, the Mughal paintings uh, we just looked at. So that's nice. Got some archers, foot archers. These are, I guess, these are supposed to be like a uh, Indian, uh, you know, Hindu levies. Spearmen. And when the Mughals uh, move into the Deccan uh, under later uh, emperors, they they uh, start to integrate the Rajput, uh, the Hindu Rajputs, into their army. So that's another aspect. But maybe I'll do a video on that, uh, the later uh, army in some other time. So it seems like uh, Essex has a nice range, uh, 15 millimeter metal figures. Um, let's see, here's the Musketeers. I wasn't able to find any other Mughal range. Um, but uh, I think this looks like the best best bet if you want a Mughal army. Uh, do they have anything else, maybe? Renaissance. No, Mughals. And for the early, well, for the early, uh, they don't have any pictures, but for the early Mughals, you could probably also use some of these Tatars as uh, represent the, the Afghans. Uh, potentially. The horse archers. So it seems like for a Mughal army, uh, early Mughal army, you would want, like I said, a mix of uh, archers, horse archers, musketeers on foot, and artillery. Okay, well, uh, thanks for uh, watching, if you're still watching. Um, I hope you found this uh, informative. And um, if you'd like to see me uh, continue on the Mughals, uh, please let me know. Uh, I haven't given up on Poland either, so I, I will try to make more videos about uh, Polish-Lithuanian armies, because that's really interesting to me. But, uh, all right, well, I hope you liked it, and I'll uh, talk to you guys in the next video.